Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're seeing a slightly different example of the previous video. We're still on a slanted surface. We have an object that is trying to slide down the incline. The question is, will it slide down the incline? And of course, that depends on whether or not the mg sine theta, the component of the weight that pulls the object down the incline, is larger than the friction force between the surface and the object. Now notice that we've already drawn some of the vectors. We have the weight of the object, we have the perpendicular component mg cosine theta, the parallel component mg sine theta, and the normal force, which is the reactionary force of the surface against the block here, which is equal in magnitude opposite direction to the weight component perpendicular to the surface. The normal force then is mg cosine of theta. Now the friction force is going to be in this direction. How do we know that? Well, the friction force is always in the opposite direction of the motion that the object will have without the friction force. If there was no friction force, the object would be sliding down the incline, therefore the friction force must be pointing in the opposite direction. And the magnitude of the friction force is going to be equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. Well, in this case, I believe we're going to be dealing with the static coefficient of friction because we're starting out with the block not moving. Since the normal force is equal to this, we can then say that the friction force can be written as the mg cosine of theta times mu sub s. Now what we're going to do is we're going to increase the angle of the incline until the block begins to slide. So we're going to be increasing the mg sine theta. Notice, if the angle is small, the mg sine theta component is very small, but as the angle increases, the mg sine theta component gets larger and larger and larger. So the force trying to pull the object down the incline gets larger as the angle increases. At the same time, the friction force gets smaller because it is a function of the cosine of the angle and the cosine of the angle gets smaller as the angle gets bigger. In the limit, as the angle is 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 is zero, and there's no longer any friction force between the object and the surface. Then the block would simply be in free fall. So we're trying to figure out at what angle the block will begin to slide down the incline. Come on, kitty, up, 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 up. So what we're trying to do now is find the point at which this force equals the maximum that the friction force can be. So let's calculate the maximum friction force. Well, in this case, the maximum friction force is indeed the mg cosine of theta, whatever the angle is, cosine of theta, times mu sub s, and the mu sub s in this example is 0 0.5. So now we're looking to see at what angle mg sine theta will be larger than that. Question is, at what angle will mg sine theta be larger than mg cosine theta times mu sub s? In this case, mu sub s, of course, is 0 0.5. All right, we can cancel out the mgs on both sides, and we can divide both sides by the cosine of theta, so we get sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta must be larger than mu sub s. And of course, the sine divided by cosine is the tangent. The tangent of theta must be larger than mu sub s. And in this case, mu sub s is indeed 0 0.5. So we're looking for the tangent of theta to be larger than 0 0.5. So what we're going to do here is take the arc tangent of 0 0.5. So 0.5, take the arc tangent, and we get 26.6 degrees. So that means that when theta is equal to 26.6 degrees, the tangent of theta is larger than 0 0.5, because at 26.6 degrees, the tangent of theta is indeed 0 0.5. So the minimum angle that we need for the block to begin to move is indeed an angle of 26.6 degrees. And that's how we do that. 